Welcome back to another episode of What the Hell is Going On with the Simulation. Let's go. Videos from a woman named Bunny. She captures something really weird. I literally have no idea what this thing is. I thought maybe a huge grasshopper. But this thing is huge and it's weird. Take a look at this and comment below on what you think this thing could be. And are we having an uptick in weird unidentified animals? Insects? Like, is this an evolutionary wave? I don't know. Tell me what you think. Oh my goodness. What the fuck? Oh my god, it flies? That shit fucking fl Oh hell no. I mean, it's a pretty big grasshopper, but that's all it is. Just Google image search giant grasshopper and it comes up with hundreds of pictures of them. They're not that rare or uncommon really in certain areas of the world. So nothing perturbing about that in my opinion. Although I wouldn't really want that thing coming anywhere near me, I'll be honest with you. Not that I think it could harm you, but let me know if you've ever seen any gigantic insects like that. In this first video, we see the underwater bubble being blasted with frequencies in creating a magnificent blue spark, blue flash of light. And now take a look at this fascinating video of what happens at the moment of conception with a human egg. If you want to unlock the secrets of this universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibrations. We are all energy beings made up of frequency and vibrations. We are seeing the literal spark of life in these moments of conception. And perhaps this is replicated on a much larger scale in this realm of ours and in the stars above. As above, so below. One thing's for sure, this world is filled with beautiful mysteries yet to be unlocked that we are now just beginning to glimpse. Question everything, friends. Until next time. Isn't that footage just amazing? The fact that we are able to actually witness something like that now, the technology that we have giving us access to such beautiful moments, the spark of life. Hey, at the end of the day, it's been said multiple times throughout history that we are beings of light. I think that's some pretty convincing evidence to suggest that. What do you think? Do you think it's true? Are we beings of light? Let me know in the comments below. And somebody just asked, why would you hide this? Well, if you think about now, when you see pictures like this, and you see buildings, and you understand that electricity was already here, and all of the technology was already here that you're using today, I mean, they even had electric sidewalks at the World Fair. You know, so electricity was rampant. They already had tons and tons of electricity. You know, so why would they hide things like this? It's because you start to ask questions. You start to ask questions about the narrative if they left these buildings up. And here's the people who hid it. These are the people who were running the whole show and they basically were the ones who were hiding the information. But what's interesting is, and you know, there's the whole argument about how this is all paper mache and you know people made this stuff out of paper and i think there is more evidence to support that we had technology far more sophisticated than we are led to believe a lot earlier on than is presented to us so i don't think it's papier mache but you have heard of built-in obsolescence, right like for instance the fact that a light bulb could be created to stay on and never blow out forever but they make sure that they do break so you have to buy another one keeps them in business right same with like medicine and things as well never cures the problem it just treats the symptoms so you stay sick but you experience the symptoms at a reduced rate of course that's just uh for entertainment entertainment purposes. Beneath the bustling streets of modern Mexico City lie the remnants of the ancient Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan. The Aztecs, who ruled much of central Mexico from the 14th to the 16th century AD, made Tenochtitlan their first official settlement. This sophisticated city was laid out with a grid of canals and causeways, a testament to their advanced urban planning. 
but according to their own historical records, the Aztecs didn't originate here. The Aztecs trace their origins to a place far to the north called Chicamastoc, a cave with seven different chambers. They believe that seven tribes emerged from these chambers and that their ancestors were among them. While Chicamastoc was once considered a myth, some scholars now believe that it may have been a real location, possibly at the ancient pyramid complex we know today as Teotihuacan. The site believed to be Chicamostoc is thought to be under the Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan, just north of the Valley of Mexico. Beneath this pyramid lies a cave with seven chambers, which the Aztecs claimed was where their ancestors first came into being. Fascinating stuff. What do you think about that? Do you think seven tribes came from seven chambers underneath that great Aztec pyramid? The structure and the design of those pyramids is just so fascinating. They look amazing. I would very much like to visit one at some point in my life if I'm fortunate enough to get the opportunity. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had the privilege of actually going and seeing these things firsthand. What was it like? Was there an energy in the air around it? Let me know. This whole smart schoolboy nine situation just got far crazier. I cannot believe I'm actually saying this. So I'm sure you're all very aware of this whole smart schoolboy nine situation. It's going crazy on social media right now. Since this whole thing came out, it's finally been revealed what his face actually looks like without the makeup and weird clothes on. And yeah, it is just like, this guy's a full on 59 year old man. What is bro doing? There he is. Still, well, he's still flipping dressed up. Now, since this whole thing broke, there has been many, many people coming forward saying about their interactions with him. Apparently he even has links to the guy who made salad fingers. So that explains it. We know his name appeared in this news article about school uniforms and how they're good. But many people claiming they've seen him out and about dressed like this, chasing them. Apparently he's had multiple run-ins with the authorities who have raided his house before and found very bad things. But these are all just allegations, so no one knows for sure. But what we do know is that some of the videos are real, and I wish I could put them here, but I can't because it will just get taken down. Videos of this guy doing some truly disturbing things and full-on chasing people. As I say, I can't post it here, but link in my bio to my full YouTube video if you want to go and watch that. But yeah, there is so many new things coming out about this guy. Apparently he's being looked into by the authorities right now, but who knows. But yeah, any more disturbing stuff I literally can't post here will be on my YouTube. But hit that follow button here, and I'll keep you updated with any new things that come out here. Smart Schoolboy 9 situation just took a massive turn today and got even crazier. So I'm sure you're all very aware of whatever this is and what he's been doing. Now we know he's a 59 year old man called David Alter who lives near Doncaster. And he was featured in this newspaper about school uniform and stuff. He's done some messed up stuff, chased kids, done all kinds of crazy stuff, but take a look at this. First of all, these are some videos from an old account of his that is now deactivated, which is wild. Now I can't actually show all of it on here because some of it's quite bad. If you want to see the full thing, go to my YouTube link in bio. We know he was photoshopping almost these creepy faces on younger people. I mean, what? And this one is really, really bad. I can't show the full photo, but... Now, this is very, very interesting. So there was a sighting and an actual account of this guy back in 1999. This was an email that was written, so you can pause the video and take a read when you can. There's been lots of rumours going around, including that he's potentially a murderer, which isn't true as far as I know. This guy here basically saying that he was looking for an apartment in London. This could be true, like, watch the video. The whole thing is just wild and just keeps getting crazier the more I look into it and the more people look into it. As I say, I can't show a lot of it here, but the full things are on my YouTube link in bio. So always make sure you hit that follow button here and I'll keep you updated. Just a big yikes situation going on there with that individual. Clearly a disturbed person, but it could all just be a prank. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you been following this story? What do you think is going to come from it? Could just be a prankster. Could be something far worse. Just stay safe out there. So the video above me is a video of a guy that's allegedly named Daniel Harris. Now, apparently Daniel Harris served in the army as a sniper for a period of time. He's from Colorado and also spent a period of time being stationed in Georgia. Another thing Thing that's been rumored to come out is that the dude apparently left the United States to go join the Russian army and to serve as a guy teaching them marksmanship and sniper tactics and things like that based on the skills that he learned in the army. Now, another thing that's come out is that apparently this dude, when he was stationed in Georgia, was diddling kids or diddled a kid and got in trouble for it, got caught for it. Apparently the person was like in third or fourth grade and was also a family member, potentially. Now, the tough thing about this whole thing is there's only one article about a guy named Daniel Harris written by the Scranton Times Tribune, but there's no pictures of him in it. And there's also no way to tell if that's the same guy. Another thing is, is like, there's no way for me to verify if this dude was actually in the army ever. So the whole article could be completely fake and made up that's been floating around. The entire 
hire this guy. Everything about his backstory, the story about what he did to, you know, get in trouble in Georgia, could all be fake. Could all just be complete, like, nonsense. That's the tough part, or the, the tough thing about this disinformation, misinformation stuff. You gotta follow up, and even after following up and doing some digging, I can't find anything on this guy except one article. No police reports, no nothing. It looks AI generated. It looks like that dream AI thing. I can't recall what it's called off the top of my head, but it looked very much like that. The movements just look so unnatural. Uh, it's not quite three dimensional. It's like a 2D image, which has been forced into looking three dimensional. The way the movements are, they just look so bizarre. But I think this is some foreshadowing for things to come where people will create completely fictional news events with fictional individuals being created for the sole purpose of generating this news and it'll be part of pushing another agenda of fear. We saw something the other day about how AI news is going to become a thing out in California. I think it was called Project Mockingbird. I might be wrong. Have a look at the old videos and see. But what do you think? Do you think this is foreshadowing for things to come? Fake news on another level? It is wild that no one knows this is happening right now. So China just hosted 50 leaders from Africa in Beijing. And keep in mind, Africa only has 54 countries. So it's fair to say that China pretty much invited the entire continent, making it one of the largest diplomatic gatherings in years. And for some reason, we're not even really hearing about it. You see, the reason for this is Africa has a huge amount of resources that the rest of the world needs. And for a while now, China have been making huge strides in becoming their best friend. Like they have been investing staggering amounts of money in Africa's development. But recently, because of China's slowing economy, that funding is kind of staggered a bit. So, classic, sneaky uh, America sees this and now they've jumped in and now they want to be best friends with Africa too. So the US starts whacking out their checkbook to counter China's influence because both of them need the resources. Both need it to power this green energy transition. So when China sees, you know, the US trying to sneak in and move in on their best friend, they call a massive summit and they make one message very clear. Choose China. And they did this by promising leaders at the summit more than $50 billion in financial support over the next three years alone. The creation of over 1 million jobs, tens of millions in food and military aid, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg of what they promised. Africa is super hot property right now, and let's just hope that all the deals being made Often. Yeah, and have you seen those lithium fields where they get those resources to make those rechargeable batteries and how terrible they are for the environment? A lot of this stuff seems very, very suspicious to me. It just doesn't seem to add up. You've got people saying you've got to be environmentally conscious. What's the same people which are telling you that are building huge industrial mines which completely scar the land and poison the surrounding environments, harm people and the generations which follow them, all in the name of reducing carbon emissions. What will it be next? What happens after that? Okay, we reduce the carbon emissions what about all the damage which was caused trying to do that aren't we just back at square one let me know in the comments below turmeric was made to hide the truth about ginger ginger is the original turmeric turmeric is a gmo human body is nature gmos like turmeric is not nature therefore your body will not recognize it body only recognizes food that is produced by the earth Every time you eat something unnatural, it causes inflammation within the body, which then weakens the organs over time. Food is specifically designed to look like the body parts it's beneficial for. This is for the stomach. Raspberries is for the blood. This is why it's red. Blueberries is for the eyes. Ears is for mushrooms. Tomatoes for the heart. Grapes is for the lungs and walnuts for the brain. Your body does not recognize any of these foods because they are GMO. They're not good for you. Did you know cans are laced with a BPA plastic lining? Fragrance can be up to 10,000 toxic synthetic chemicals. Plastic chopping boards put plastic in your food. And non-stick pans are coated with Teflon, which is a lifelong chemical. Toilet paper uses chlorine to bleach the paper. You could eat the most healthiest diet in the world, but if you think and feel negative, this destroys your health. The body follows the mind. The mind is the root cause of all reality. You can think your way into illness. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. Protect your mind at all costs because your life is an externalization of your mind. I've had many questions about Shilajit. I personally do not take it. If you want to learn more about health and wonder what this book is called, it's called The Human Health Guide. You can get the PDF in my bio. Turmeric is not 
a GMO. It's literally a plant. It's derived from a plant which grows in abundance in various places around the world. So I'm not sure what that individual's gone about, but as far as the BPA within cans, that was something that I recently discovered. Sometimes your tins of soup and things like that come from out of a can which has a BPA lining. So double check these things when you're purchasing them. Really want to try and avoid getting those horrible things inside your body. Let me know, have you changed your dietary lifestyle to try and avoid these kinds of things? Share some of your best practices in the comments below. David was an average height for an Israelite. Clyde's paper says, for those who are five feet zero inches, their cubit would be about 16 inches. Assuming a 16 and a half inch cubit for a David who was five foot three inches would indicate that Goliath was about eight feet 11 inches tall. Note, this matches the height of the world's tallest person according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Okay, now we're starting to get into the world of realism. Incidentally, David may have measured Goliath with his helmet on, and this may have increased his height. The Philistines are known for their plumed helmets which they wore. So, if you take the helmet off, he might actually be a little bit shorter than that. Hmm. Well, now we're stumped again. What are we supposed to think? Accounting for the fact that a true length of common cubit varies. Goliath could now be anything between 7 feet tall and 10 feet tall. We need a tiebreaker. So what other sources do we have left? There is one more ancient source from another nation that mentions giants. And they had a standardized cubit, which could really help us narrow down the range here. Source number four. Ancient Egyptian writings speak of Canaanites whom they called Shah. Not sure what that clip cut off as it did. Sorry about that. We're all aware of the story of David and Goliath, right? I think most children are told that story. It's a story of overcoming great hardship, but it could also be a tiny slither of evidence to support the idea that there were once giants which roamed around. Or was just Goliath an outlier? Or was it just a story that was created to help push that teaching about overcoming hardship? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Hey everybody. So here's a really cool little game that you can play to test this idea of manifestation and the law of attraction. I know a lot of people are still skeptical and that's totally part of the process. So you have to play with it, you have to test it, you have to um, see how it works for you. So here's a little game you can play. 17 seconds, all you're gonna do is smile. You're not gonna try to think anything, you're not gonna try to do anything, you're just gonna literally do the act of smiling and hold that for 17 seconds. Now before you do this, Take note of how you feel. Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling whatever? Just sort of give yourself a check-in. Notice how you're feeling. Then after the 17 seconds, check back in. See how you feel now. Did you notice an increase? Now, step two is do the smile for 17 seconds again. This time, think of something that you really enjoy. Think of like a vacation that you've had or if you have a pet that you love or a person that you love. Just think of anything that brings you joy. It could be an ice cream cone, whatever. Do it for 17 seconds again, and then see how your state changes from that point on. Now, do it a third time, 17 seconds again, and this time, just let yourself go wild with your imagination. Imagine all the wonderful things that you would like to have or that you currently do have or anything that just keeps you going higher and higher and higher. Try those three different rounds, and then, Immediately after that, within the next hour, let's say, or the rest of the day, notice what happens. Did your day go good? Did it go average? Let me know in the comments. See what happens next. This is going to be fun. I think from just a self-care perspective that is very beneficial to practice some form of affirmation every single day. I do it every single night before I go to bed. Certain goals that I want to achieve and things like that, I reflect on the way that my life is and I then try and express gratitude for the future that I desire as if it has already happened. And I have found that my life has changed since I started doing that in such a positive way. Let me know if you do that, if you practice any form of affirmation to try and bring abundance and positivity into your life. Let me know if you try that 17 second thing as well. I hadn't come across that idea before. I might give it a go tomorrow morning, see how my day goes. Let me know if you try it, and let's see in the comments if we all have had a better day from trying it. So we live inside of the matrix. This is a simulation. Everything around you is a simulation. To me, that's a fact. 
Wait, did I say fact? I meant just kidding. Just joking around TikTok. This is for entertainment purposes only. But I know a lot of people out there aren't ready to jump on that train yet. And I get it, it's fine. There are a lot of people that are never gonna be ready to jump on that train. One of the main stumbling points to people that aren't willing to accept that this is a simulation is that if this is a simulation, then what's the point? There's no point. Everything is just laid out for you. Everything around you is just part of the game then what's the point? It's kind of like the movie War Games with Matthew Broderick. At the end of the movie, after playing tic-tac-toe with itself over and over and over again, it realizes that there's no point in playing, that the only logical choice is just not to play. Well, this is nihilism. And when some people are confronted with the fact that they live inside of a simulation, they go straight to nihilism. What's the point? There's no point in doing anything now. If life has no meaning, what's the point? I understand that sentiment, but you're missing the point. The point is, is if this is a simulation, then there is a creator and that creator wants you to break free. I got it a little bit twisted the other day when I made a video and I talked about the creator punishing me for talking about the matrix. The creator is not punishing us. The system is punishing us. These guys are punishing us. They're part of the system. They're not the creator. And if you think they don't exist, then you're just not deep enough yet. But if you're having nihilism, a feeling that nothing matters, everything is a construct, time is a construct, the names of the days of the week are just words. Why is September and October not the seventh and eighth month of the year? You've been lied to your entire life. I'm not expecting anybody to just listen to my words and go, he's right. No, I would much rather you say, he's crazy and here's why, and then you go down the rabbit hole and you find out for yourself, right? Damn it, man. I think that's one thing you've got to be really careful with when you start going down these rabbit holes. Force yourself into a mental state of nihilism. Life is for the living, right? So we've got to make the most out of every single day. Even if this is all just a simulation, he makes a good point. There's a creator, which means whether we like it or not, we're here to play the game and we're expected to play it. How we win though, that could be different for every single person, but you've got to be in it to win it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I've just listened to an interview with Donald Trump and the interviewer says that World War Three, or people believe that World War Three is inevitable unless Donald Trump gets back in. There was a recent poll that uh, YouGov did that, that pointed out over 60% of Americans feel that World War Three and nuclear war is going to happen within five to 10 years because they're at a point where they feel like this outcome, the annihilation of the world is inevitable. So I, I wanted to ask you about this because it's important that people understand what kind of leadership you bring, what you will do to stop this slide towards nuclear war and World War III so that we can feel hopeful again. But how insane is it? And I don't mean insane like, wow, that blew my mind. I mean insane like, listen to what you're saying. That Donald Trump, out of 7 billion people in this planet, or on this planet, is the only one that can stop a world war. Bearing in mind that a lot of the conflict that's going on is in different countries miles and miles and miles away. Most Americans won't even know where the f*** they are. But yet the X that they put in their box in the USA is going to stop a world war. So you've got some f***ing yokel with three teeth in their entire head chewing on tobacco and playing a f***ing banjo that are going to be our saviours. Really? The f***ing arrogance. They still believe that they've got the world in their grasp. They think that they can just click the fingers and everything will be fine or they can cause a world war. I've said it before a million times. USA, the home of Hollywood. Lies, acting, deceit, corruption. But yet we're going to trust them to save our souls in Europe. To answer the interviewer, Donald Trump says I'd be able to do it with a phone call. F*** it, Donald. Send him a text, you big powerful f***. Apart from a few areas on this world, we are at in peace. I know it's getting aggy, but don't let that distract you. He's Captain Planet or something. In a nutshell, the interviewer is saying, basically, what do we need to do? We need to vote for you, otherwise the world is going to be annihilated. That is exactly the question that she's asking. I mean, this is in a room full of people that aren't actually screaming, are you insane? Are you actually insane? One man has the power to do what seven to eight billion other people cannot. And it's got nothing to do with money, has it? And I said all that while supporting LA. Like, share, follow, 
you know what to do. I can see what he's getting at, but to suggest that America is the seat of all evil in the world is a little bit of a reach. Got to remember where America originates from. And unfortunately, you got a little bit closer to home, my friend. I think a lot of the evil of this world, unfortunately, stems from the United Kingdom, if you go back far enough in history. But anyway, that's beside the point. I can see where he's coming from, where he's saying that it's arrogant to believe that one man who's just the face of the current government of the United States of America at the time could actually put a stop to a global annihilation. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I don't think it's really beneficial to dwell on that kind of thing. You know, you, you're going to end up living your life an anxious wreck, worrying about doomsday. And that's not living. You're a slave to a perspective then, you know. But what are your thoughts? Do you think that was some kind of planted question to try and push voters to believe that Trump is a superhero who can save the world? I'm neither a supporter or even against Trump. To me, it doesn't matter. I think that what's going to happen is going to happen no matter who is the face of the government at any given moment. And that goes the same for every country in the world. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That just about rounds up today's video. I hope you enjoyed the clips. If you did, please drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content, which I post every single day at 8 p.m. UK time. And if you want to carry on the conversation after the video ends, we have a Discord community server in which you can join by clicking the link in the description below. But for now, stay well, stay safe, and stay curious. Until next time.